welcome Queen Noor here, a national storyteller. She is a nationally renowned storyteller and she is going to perform her program, Voices of Courage. I was born Karen Maria Bolter. And I am a descendant of my great-great-grandmother, B.C., who lived in Kennett Square, Chester County, Pennsylvania, a place that they called mushroom country, where enslaved Africans would cross over and into to breathe in that which they dreamed of, sown for, and risked their lives. Freedom. And so today, as I tell these stories, we celebrate Women's History Month with Voices of Courage. And I'd like to begin with Sojourner Truth. I want you to put your hands on your lap. You're going to put one hand over here, raise it up, put it down. Put it down, raise it up, put it down. Down, up, down, down, up, down. It should sound like a galloping horse. We're going to speed it up. I just do but I do but this I do but that I do I had a yellow cat Get over double trouble juba I do it for ma I do it for pa I do it for my brother-in-law Juba I just juba It was a good time from the not so easiness of their lives and now on this day, June 1st, 1843, Isabel Bonfrey was leaving the city. She was leaving New York. She would find long places of sanctuary where she could talk with God as loud as she pleased. But it was quiet when he came. Quiet in the name of King, like an old friend, sojourner, sojourner. Why are you gathering around me with those clubs and sticks? I'm not going to harm no one. We didn't come to hurt you, old lady. We just want to hear you sing, old lady. Sing, talk to us. Well, I can hardly sing or speak. When you stand so close with the smoke in my face, get back, get back, stand back. Sing, old woman, sing. Well, I talked and I sang until I was weary. But those boys, they wanted to hear one more. Bless my soul, I got my seal today, today. To slay the liar in the field today, today. Well, those boys, they left us that evening in peace. Now, about this thing called intellect. Well, if you say that women have a pint and man have a court, won't you give women a little pint full? You need not be afraid of giving us our rights for fear will take too much. We can't take more than our little pipe will hold. <laughs> and so we may never know Sojourner's exact words, but we do know the importance of her legacy to our history. Even through the songs that she composed, the lyrics that she composed for the Civil War. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. As we go marching on. Sing that with me. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Come on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I like it. Glory, glory, hallelujah. 
Look there above the center where the flag is waving bright. We are marching out of slavery. We are bound for freedom's light. We need to show Jeff Davis how the Africans can fight as we go marching on. Sing the song, come on. Lord. When Mass is here shouting, he won't think he's got a call. And we go marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. And we go marching on. By the time the Civil War broke out in 1861, Sojourner's good friend, Armenta Ross, had been deemed the Moses of her people. Does anybody know her other name? Who am I talking about? Who? Yes. Me? Yes. Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, that's right. <laughs> By the time the Civil War was over, Harriet had been a cook, a nurse, a spy, and a scout. I was deemed the poet preacher for I would scatter flowers of poetry among our paths and I would if I could amidst life's sad discords introduce the most entrancing strains of melody and I would teach men and women to love noble deeds by setting them to music of fitly spoke words. And so was the essence of Francis Ellen Watkins Harper. I could not rest if I heard the tread of a coffle's gang to the shambles led, and the mother's shriek of wild despair rise like a curse on trembling air. I could not sleep if I saw the latch Drinking her blood and each fearful gash. And I saw her babes torn from her breast like trembling doves from their parent nest. Frances Ellen Watkins Harper is known as the first African American woman to ever publish a novel in the United States entitled Iola Leroy. As she was traveling, she went south. And when she was in Memphis, she spent some time with Ida B. Wells. Liza, how I love you. Oh, it's not. But then he came back 
you'll have to move to the other car. Colors are not allowed in first class. I refused. I was in the lady's car and I proposed to stay. But he started to pull at my arm. I braced myself. He continued to yank upon my arm. He walked away, but then he came back with assistance, and they lifted and they pulled and they pried me out of my seat. I'd rather get off the train than go to the smoker car, and I did. And that is when I won the lawsuit against the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad Company, but it was overturned by the Tennessee State Courts, and that is when I knew that we must work together for change. And in 1913, she went to Washington, D.C. to march for women's right to vote. But in Washington, D.C., we know that there was another strong voice, another voice of courage. And her name was Mary Church Terrell. The Washington Street M School was one of the best schools in the country for black children. And one day, the children wrote on the board, Mr. Terrell is getting very good. He used to go to dances, but now he goes to church. And that's certainly correct. For I loved working with him in the Latin department so much that I decided to work with him in every department for the rest of my life. I was asked to sit on the Board of Education with Washington, D.C., and I asked that February 14th be deemed Frederick Douglass Day, and I won victoriously. But you see, I wanted to work for the disparities against my people beyond Washington, D.C., and so I began a lecture tour. And the time came for a national movement of colored women, and I was elected president of the National Association of Colored Women. And myself, I am nothing. But with the loyal support of conscientious women, all things are possible. Mary McLeod Bethune loved the work of Mary Church Terrell. Mama, Mary's got the some days again. See, Mary some days became an institution of higher learning. It became a hospital. But that school, when she built it, there were some people who did not like the fact that she was building a school for black children. And they were men of ghost courage. What I'm talking about are the men who wore the sheets. And they rode up to her school one day when Mary was away working on the women's right to vote. And the children and the students and the teachers inside, they were scared. And they told Mary what happened when she came back. And she said, let them come back again. Let them come back one more time. And they did the very next day. And inside, once again, the children started to shiver and cry. And the teachers huddled. And Mary said, no, sing. Sing, my children, sing. This little light of mine. Come on. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Sing the song now. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine.